Greetings and welcome to the Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to talk about some of the applications of optics in terms of how they can be used in devices like microscopes and telescopes. So get an idea on how we can put to use what we've learned in the rest of this these chapters to understand a little bit more about more about how this topic is used in science. So let's start off looking at the microscope. So we know that our eye has a great ability. We can see very large and very small things. But there are limits. There are things that we did not know about until the microscope was invented, allowing us to look at much smaller detail than could poss possibly be seen with the eye. Now microscopes have been around for hundreds of years now and you can have very simple microscopes and they get more and more complicated and allow you to see more and more detail. But the very simplest ones came in the early 1600s similar to the time development time for the telescope and they do allow us to see far beyond what our I can see. So if you've ever had a chance to look through a microscope you can see far more detail here as you look through the microscope and have a small piece of material that you're expanding and trying to look at in far more detail down at the bottom there. Now we want to look a little bit about how these work so we can see that the most the simplest one would have an objective lens and an eyepiece. So that would be the very simplest version. They do get much more complicated. You would have your objective lens here your eyepiece here. So you're looking here at some object and that object is very small here. But as the light rays go through and you hopefully will recognize from ray tracing how these light rays work, how parallel rays go through the focus, central rays are undisturbed and rays going through the fork focus end up parallel. So you can see how those ray tracing rules that we've looked at apply here. But that allows the Im image to actually be far larger than the original object itself. So the object was small and the image is many times that size, allowing us to see things that would be otherwise invisible to our eyes. Now, how does the, what how can we figure this out? How can we calculate this? Each lens does some magnification and the total magnification is the product of these two. So the magnification of the microscope is the magnification of the objective multiplied by the magnification of the eyepiece. So if the eyepiece is 50, magnifies 15 times and the objective 10 times, then we multiply those together to get a total magnification of 150 times. So even a simple telescope a microscope can actually magnify things by many, many times and things that would be you know, beyond the edge of our vision are now visible to us and things that we can see. So another device would be a telescope and a basic telescope will also have an objective and an eyepiece. Just as we see here, here is the objective and here is the eyepiece. And you can do this a couple of different ways. In the upper one, we have we're using a convex and a concave lens and that will give us an upright image. That's what we use for a spyglass. So if you're looking out in the distance and you're trying to see things, you want them looking as though they are in the proper orientation so that this allows them to be switched in size. This will not invert their size, their, their appearance and they will actually appear as that when you're looking through the device that they will appear right side up. However, in a, if you use two convex lenses as we do in telescopes, you will get an inverted image. Now that would not be very good for a spyglass looking for things here on Earth because it would flip things upside down. However, looking through the distance there, looking out, out in, at the distance, you can see that it would really not make any difference for astronomical objects. So if you ever look at the moon through a telescope, you will see that it is inverted and that what you're seeing is the top when you look at it without the telescope, it is now at the bottom. 
But of course, when you take astronomical images or photos, they can be flipped upside down very easily. You're not sitting there trying to study something off in the distance as you would be with a spyglass. Now we can also look at magnification for a telescope. And the magnification of a telescope is given by the focal length of the objective divided by the focal length of the eyepiece. For maximum magnification, you want a long focal length objective and a short focal length eyepiece. So you want this number to be large, this number to be small, and that will make the magnification much larger. So you'll get a much higher magnification. However, we find that magnification is a relatively unimportant factor in astronomical telescopes. Astronomers are not trying to magnify things as much as they can. They want to see as much detail. So they want bigger telescopes. Magnification does not bring out any more detail. It just magnifies, for example, a somewhat blurry image. So if you don't have the detail there, magnifying it more is not going to bring out any more detail and is not going to help you with seeing fainter objects. Now we can look at the examples of reflecting telescopes, which can also which are also used. We had looked at a lens telescope, what we call a refracting telescope. A reflecting telescope uses a mirror where the light comes in from a distant object reflects off the surface and not back to a focus which would be over here someplace but off another mirror off to the side where you would actually observe. You can imagine that putting your head right here is blocking a lot of the light so for a small telescope this would not work and you would be able to look at light here. Now we use mirrors in most astronomical telescopes because it is easier to make large mirrors than large lenses. The light doesn't have to pass through them and they can be supported from behind. So you can put supports back behind here on a mirror. If you try to do that on a lens, you're block blocking the light. Uh, telescopes can also be constructed that look at things like infrared and ultraviolet and other types and parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Now there are some problems with telescopes and there are a couple of different what we call aberrations or problems. One is chromatic aberration and when you have a lens it acts like a prism and splits light up into its component colors. So when you have light coming into a lens it gets split and you have the red light bent a little bit less the violet bent a little bit more. So the violet light focuses here the red light focuses here and not everything does not come to the same focus. There are ways to fix or minimize this if you use multiple lenses that will then bring things together and give you one single focus. It's not perfect, but it is a way to minimize these. Although the more light you have more, the more the light has to travel through thicker lenses and more lenses, the more light is absorbed. Here on Earth, that doesn't matter all that much. However, out when you're looking at very faint objects, you want every photon of light that you can possibly collect. Now, we have other aberrations, including spherical aberration, when we're looking at a spherical lens or mirror. And that means that the rays are focusing at different distances. So rays up at the top focus here rays from coming from the closer in are focusing way out here. So again, they're not coming to a straight focus. We can use things like parabolic mirrors, which will bring everything to a better focus here as an example of a one way to help get around the spherical aberration. And the last one is what we call coma. Coma is an off-centered object. So just objects that are off-center will end up being distorted. So if you're looking straight at an object, it comes through and it's focused fine. But you notice here an object that's off to the side of the lens. When its light comes through, it gets all distorted and there are multiple places where the light rays intersect. It does not come to any single focus. So these are just some of the problems that can be associated with telescopes and that can be minimized or eliminated through the use of various types of lenses to minimize and adjust things so that they so that these aberrations uh, do not occur or occur minimally. 
So let's go ahead and finish up here with our summary. And what we find is that we have microscopes and telescopes that both magnify images, letting us see the worlds of very large and very small. The magnification of a telescope or microscope depends on the objective and the eyepiece. And we talked about some of the various aberrations that are associated with using lenses or mirrors. But to some extent, these can be corrected. So that concludes this lecture on microscopes and telescopes. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.